My altar is calling in you, oh God. Just with the sun, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are dancing around, right? Just with the sun. Expressly tonight, let not one person live here the way they came, not one. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please, you can sit down. Forgive worship too. How many of you know what's on their mind when they brought this song today? <laughs> they had a bad plan. They had a very bad plan. <laughs> but I figured out that if we do that, <laughs> ah, this. This year we will not finish the things we need to do. Or, but don't worry, it's not. The service has not finished, okay? Either fights and runs away. This is not another day, another time. Okay? Because it's still today, we are still the day. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's dancing around the righteous made a sound. I know I'm afflicted, don't worry. <laughs> but the very reason why I'm afflicted, thou shalt be afflicted too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 17. Can we read together? For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. That's 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now, I would have this, what I'm trying to do now, I would have done it much later, but I'm trying to see how we'll be able to finish everything that we need to do today. So, that's why I'm starting from this point. So, it's more like I'm taking one of the things I needed to take from behind and bring in front. It will help me to be able to manage the timing better. 
You know, we have been talking about the crucified life, and one of the things we've been talking about, we've been trying to stress in, in the past one or two weeks, we've been trying to look at not only that it's important that we know that we are crucified, what are the things that we need to do to be able to ensure that that which God has given to us, we prosper in it. That life that we have, because we, it is one thing for us to have the life of God, is another thing for us to do what? To prosper in that life that we have. And, and one of the things we said, the first thing we talked about uh, with respect to what we need to do is that we said we must, as believers, empower our minds in line with the finished work of Christ. We must have that always. We must empower our minds with the things that Jesus has done and let our minds be equipped with that. And, and then we also began to talk about meditation last week and we talked about how that every believer who wants to be successful must be an active talker you must be one who talks and I, I and i went for that to explain that it is not talkativeness as though you just talk about anything but the word of god must continually be in your mouth you must be one who has the word of god in your mouth every time a, a successful believer must be an active talker and another thing that will help us to be able to live out, to prosper in the life of God that we have, is that every believer must yield or must respond positively to the leadings of the Spirit. Every believer. You must yield or respond positively to the leadings of the Spirit. Because at some point... You must begin to understand that the, the voice of God that comes to you, there are times he begins to lay things and tell you things to do. And those things may not necessarily be, you know, categorized as whether wrong or right in themselves. For example, there's nothing wrong with eating, but there are times he will come and he will tell you to stay away from food. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with, you may not even be fasting, he may just tell you not to eat this thing. And sometimes he may just even want to invade your privacy and decide to tell you who to speak to and not to speak to. Sometimes even what you wear. Yes. The Holy Spirit wants to be that personal with you. So, so at some point he begins to give you notice. Have you ever had a situation before where you, maybe you didn't hear a voice. Maybe you're not conversant with the fact that the Holy Ghost speaks in that way. But you had a particular thing you wanted to wear. Maybe a particular shoe or a particular shirt or something. And in your mind... You had prepared, you had even pictured yourself on that thing, and that morning you woke up and you just could not bring yourself to wearing that clothes. Have you had that? How many of you have had that kind of experience before? You just could, there was nothing wrong with it. Nothing. Yes. Sometimes the Holy Ghost can want to be that personal. Yes. And the reason he's doing that is because he wants to bring you to a place. You see, you see, if you're not able to hear God in the very basic, so to speak, ordinary things, it will be difficult for him to hear him in the big things. Yes, it will be difficult. It will be difficult for you to hear God with respect to who is your wife. If you cannot hear him to know what he wants you to eat. Yes. You would make a lot of mistakes. Because your emotions will be involved and every other thing. So what he's doing when he comes to you on a daily basis to interact, to lead you, to tell you certain things that may not be wrong in themselves. But for you, he doesn't want you to engage in them. The reason he's doing that is because he wants to build you. He wants to build you to a place because one day you will need it. One day you will need it. You will, you will need it because you will come to a point in your life. Every one of us will come to that point. As if you want to be serious with God and you want to go far in anything that God does, you will come to that point in your life one day where you have to make a very sensitive decision and you may not have more than two seconds to make it. Yes. That day will not be the day where you say, let me go and think about it and come back. You have to make it now. And anything you make that is not correct, you will be jeopardizing a generation forever. You see, when you come to that day and you still have not been able to master the voice of the Spirit and be able to yield when He speaks, ah, you'll be a tragedy. Every 
every one of us. So what he does on a daily basis, he wants to train you, he wants to mature you, he wants to build you. And so he keeps trying to lead you in different ways. And then the Bible is telling us where we read. He said, let's go to verse 16. This same, we're still here. He said, but I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He's already given us the medicine. That if you walk in the spirit, you forget it. It is not, it is not maybe, maybe not. If a man walks in the spirit, he shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then he went further in verse 17 to tell us. He said, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other. So that ye cannot, are you saying cannot? Not me not. Ye cannot. So it means that this thing is possible to everybody. Ye cannot do the things that ye would. Now that may not have to be negative. It can still be positive. It's both ways. So the idea is this, that if you walk in the spirit and you yield to the instructions of the Holy Ghost, and sometimes you are praying, he leads you to pray, and you stay there and you keep praying in the Holy Ghost, and you're spending time interceding and you're praying, and then maybe it's time for you to leave, and he said, just give me five more minutes. You have something else you want to do, and he said, just give me five more minutes. Now, the five more minutes may not mean that anything spectacular will happen, but that you yield to him. Sometimes you give him the five minutes, you give him ten. You are expecting that because he said something. When it is ten minutes, the windows will shake. And your door will move from where it is to another place. And nothing happened and then you feel disappointed. The greatest works of the Spirit of God is not outward, it's within. So even if he chooses to move the door from one place to another, that is not, for us, that is spectacular. That is not as powerful as what he's doing in your spirit, man. It's not. It's not. The greatest activities of the spirit is within you. So he brings you to a place where this reality is possible. Where so that you cannot do the things that you would. Even though your flesh has a desire, all of a sudden it has been incapacitated. Because now you are addicted to the voice of the spirit. You, are now, you have now given yourself over to the spirit. Whether you like it or not, you say yes to him. At that point... Even when your flesh wants to sin, you would have realized that he doesn't have in himself the ability to do it. Because something has happened to you. Because you have yielded well enough. Then he went to verse 18 and he said, But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the What does it mean to be under the law? Let me show you Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 6. Verse 14. Hayaku barakade leketo barahashta. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under what? So what he's saying is this. That if a man is led by the Spirit, this will become a possibility. Sin will no longer have dominion over that man. It doesn't mean that sin will not suggest. But that thing called dominion, you see, that thing that happens to an unbeliever, that when he chooses to want to do certain, or when his, when his desires to do certain things come, he cannot help but do it. It's not, this thing is not a possibility for a man who is led by the Spirit. Sin shall not have dominion over that man. So even when the voice of the enemy comes, no. You rise above. 
because you are not under the law but you are under grace I've come to realize that this thing called grace or this reality in God called grace really there are no sides to it Sometimes we try to explain it and we try to balance a lot of things. Grace is grace. Is the thing is just that what we teach grace to be is not what it is. No. It's not an excuse. It's an ability. It's an enablement. So when the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you and the reason is you are not under the law because it is under the law that sin seems to have dominion over the people and when people do that the idea is that they are walking in the flesh but when a man is led by the spirit the Bible is saying that man is operating under something called what? Grace. Every time a man is led by the spirit the atmosphere he operates under is grace. So every time you yield to the voice of the Spirit that comes to you, what the Spirit of God is doing with you is channeling your path in that atmosphere of grace. <laughs> So sometimes he will come to you and he will tell you to give me give you his night. He will tell you, give me your night for one week. And you think he just wants to punish you. And you give him your night for one week. And for that one week, you didn't even see a vision, not even a good dream. Have you ever fasted before and you did a very serious fast? Serious one, as in you, this one, even you, you know that just in case the angels I had before were one wings, now they are six. Even you, you, you know that in the spirit, you are not walking on the floor. You felt like the way you fasted, even the angels will say, Oh my, what a man. <laughs> Kind of fast that brings one kind of confidence and when you finished you went to dream and the first dream you had they pursued you <laughs> and you were disappointed and you felt like nothing happened Some of you, you even decided to exercise. I'm speaking prophetically right now. Some of you even decided to exercise some very strenuous fast. And after doing it, just about the last days of the fast, the way it broke was that a lady came and said, you still in your dream. And you woke up here like God. Not a king. <laughs> under the law yeah, that grace under grace God is responsible for you under grace God is responsible for you Under grace, your holy living. Yes, you have to take advantage of the life of God to live holy. But the thing is this. It is the life of God. It's not you. It's not your ability. It's not your possibility. God is responsible for you. And God is not just responsible for you to do things. He's responsible for the things that happen to you. So when a man is under grace... Your worries, 
should not be yours anymore. When a man is under grace, everything that concerns that man is God's concern. So just in case the enemy comes to me in those kinds of times, I don't worry about it. I go about the things I need to go about. Ah! And I'll just say, God, this one is your business. I'm not under the law. Under the law, I'm expected to do. Under grace, I receive what you have done. It's not me. As you can see, I didn't even go and meet any girl. <laughs> I didn't. I was reading my Bible. Well, I didn't expect that it should happen. But if that happened, glory be to God. I open my Bible and I continue reading. You know why? Casting all of my cares upon who? Upon Him. For He what? Yes. So I take it as it is. And I say, God, this would have been my kid if I was under the law. But now I'm under grace. You can't care for me and I care too. No need. So I'm careful for nothing. And the reason I'm careful for nothing is because you care for me. See, see the, the devil... The devil has stolen so much from the body. And we need to restore it back. I was talking with some few persons the other day in the house, and I was explaining something to them. I said, somebody came to meet me and said, Sir, I've been dreaming of my late parents. I've been seeing them in my dreams. And I said, and so? But they are dead. I said, if you see Paul in your dream, will you be worried? If you see Ketan Kuma, will you be worried? <laughs> if you see Babalola, if I are praying to see them. I said, so they, they are where? <laughs> says, I, I, and some people have made, made money selling books on this thing. He says, I, I, I dreamed I was eating with dead people. Okay. What if you sat down on the dining table and Apostle Paul was there? And Peter was there? And Elijah was there? And Moses was there? And Ketrin Kuma was there? And Archbishop Benson was there. And they were eating in the same place. You will wake up and you'll be flying. You will just wake up. You will just wake up in the morning and you just... Pa, 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 because you expect that you should fly. <laughs> if you saw your late father, don't you think he wants to impact you? Who likes you more than your father? see a dead person's picture, you can't even look at it. You can't look at it. You're afraid. He has died. Hey, no, 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 no. Meanwhile, in your wallet, in fact, what you are working for every day is a paper full of dead men. The money in your hand, who is there? Are they alive? Do you have one money in your hand with a living man? You see, the fear that is killing you is you that is bringing it on yourself. You want to kill yourself on paper full of dead men because they wrote 100, 500, 200, 1000, and that's what you are all your life. You are, you are dying to get a, a, a pack full of dead men's picture. <laughs> uh, 
They are not under the law. They are under grace. You don't know what grace has made available. You, you have reduced yourself too small. You are running away from what is afraid of you. <laughs> Some things we don't need to pray about. Spiritual intelligence sorts it out. Yes. Yes. If your prayer does not help you to grow to the place of wisdom and knowledge in the things of the spirit, understanding of how these things happen, you will pray all your life. And that devil that has been oppressing you will still keep oppressing you. I know who I am. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. And on that grace, he is responsible for everything that concerns me. Hey. Somebody will be delivered today. And some are already delivered. That's not a problem. I know, I know some of you are already. As in you have had a major deliverance just now. While I was speaking that time, just a few minutes ago, the anointing of the Lord just came on another measure and it was for somebody in this place and the Lord is anointing you and is giving you an authority in this way. The Lord is changing your atmosphere. changing your atmosphere. I adore Shabbatah. Shall you be oppressed? Changing your atmosphere. Changing your atmosphere. Changing your atmosphere. Yeah. 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 is asking me to stay here. I don't know why. It's dancing around the righteous wheel is out. Let's, I, because I need us to finish this. Philippians chapter 4. Let me, you can, what can I say? Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. I know you all know this scripture. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. I know you know this scripture. Ah, yes. 
Meanwhile, the atmosphere is open already. That's what I just said. You just needed to do that. It's open. It's open on another level. And so while the meeting is going on, they may be calling, calling, just yield. Just be alert in your spirit. Because the Lord may be dialing your number today. He may be calling you for encounters. So just be open. Is open already. They may want to come and dance with you, they may just want to come and dance with you. And if they come, just leave it. shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. But how? Now, this scripture, we have used this scripture a lot of the times too. When we need financial assistance, when we need so many of those things. Meanwhile, while it is true that it, is, it will help you financially, it will help you material, materially. This scripture is deeper than finance, it's deeper than material needs. What the Bible didn't say, that he didn't say he will help, he will supply all of your financial needs. He said, all your need. And what opened this that Paul said to the, to the church in Philippi was that they yielded to the leading of the Spirit to give. So it wasn't about the giving is not what I'm trying to drive at. What I'm trying to drive at was that what opened it was a yielding. They yielded to a desire that came from the Lord to sow. And when they did, Paul now began to speak. And Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according. So this is one of the things that yielding does. It opens you up to the bounties of his glory. So even though you are there, there's such a thing as prospering in that which God has made available. Let me show you something in Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 16. Because now we can see. Then he would grant you according to the what? According to what? Of what? Now, does that word, does that statement look familiar to you? Does it look familiar? Where did we see it from? Ephesians 4, 19. Abi, am I correct? And now he's saying that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be what? So we see that one of the things that happens that comes out of the riches of his glory is strength. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in your inner man. That the spirit of God dwells in your inner man. And then there's such a thing as that which dwells in your inner man to supply mind. To supply mind. So much so that the things that were almost impossible for you to do becomes possible. And the things that used to be your possibilities becomes impossible. Romans chapter 8, I'm trying to be very fast. From verse 13. From verse 13, Jesus. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do what? What does it mean to mortify? To put to death. To kill. So it means that you can through the Spirit kill 
the desires of your flesh, the deeds of the body, then you shall live. Let's continue. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. No, that's not the spirit you have received. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Fear is not part of the possibilities of a spiritual man. No! Anytime a believer sees fear around, a foreign body is responsible. Treat it as being foreign. Is a stranger. Is an uninvited, unwelcome stranger. How do you handle a thief when he comes to your house? At least one of the first things you will do, just in case you cannot do anything, you shout. Am I correct? You ask for help. You call for backup. How comes when it comes to fear, we treat them differently? The Bible is saying that God has not given us the spirit of bondage again to fear. That's not the spirit we received. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry. Abba Father. For the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Continue. And if children then heirs and heirs then heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified. I think we should stop there. But yielding to the Spirit puts to death the deeds of the flesh. Yes. So every one of us must, if there's one thing we must listen for, it's for his voice. When was the last time you sincerely asked him, what are you saying about this? And when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than me. If see, treat fear as a stranger, it's not your own. Yield into the spirit. I pray in the Holy Ghost for some few minutes. We'll would continue. A few seconds. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Marada bo si keta la bando si kapara te la borada. Itarus kida bo do lo coste de ve do kombra asu kapara te a kondo lo kapara te a kota la bababante. Dio ko shagadala ba de bereke tuduma de bereke de 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 rabada balando skipa da ite dira ko pa te ko rabana ko de na ko do lo bosa Just keep praying. The sound of the angels. Just keep praying. And I see your glory in this place. You are dancing around, righteous with the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
see your glory in this place. Ah, ah, ah. See a river rising. It's dancing around the righteous with the sound. in this place. My God is dancing around. Yes. Someone is swimming already. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, I, 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 I. I hear the sound of me.
in substance. I cannot explain it. It's like it's, I can't explain the shape of it. But it's like a circle and all that. But it's like wind also. And it's blowing it into someone's ear. And I see that it entered into one ear and came out from the other side. The Lord is constructing a system for a prophet. A construction as we're talking now, the Lord is constructing a system for a prophet. Yes, in your spirit, there's a construction now. <laughs> I speak to that one that the Lord is doing this too, and I decree that from now henceforth. The Lord will hijack your thoughts. Not once in a while. It will be a frequent thing. You hijack your thoughts. 
and it will be a major channel for communication. The particular one I'm speaking about, you've been having issues with the way you think. It has been worrying you. It has been bothering you. And the Lord is saying that now. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yes. Touch that one. 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 Touch. 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 Even much more. Even much more. First Corinthians chapter six. First Corinthians of the Saints. <laughs> First Corinthians of the Saints. Ah, we're not here. Verse 9. Know ye not. That the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, you see, you need to forgive me. I don't want us to. I don't want us to go and <laughs> and continue the series next week. There's so much that we need to do. The, mo- the year is almost running out. Now, <laughs> oh, <Joey. laughs> No, you know. <laughs> That your righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Maybe we should read this together. Are we ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. That your righteous. Tickling my spirit, that's the problem. The problem is that an angel is tickling my spirit, that's the problem. And the indication is it's touching some people now. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You are, you are doing your own thing, it is your own meeting, it's all yours. Thou shalt be established, and thou shalt be far from oppression. anointing somebody with a strange unction now. Strange. Now, what I see with this person, what I see with this person, what I see with this person is that for a very long time, and that will be almost a usual thing with you. 
this person is anointed for ministry. Yes. Whether it's, I don't know if it's whether probably a T9 ministration or something, whether missions, whatever it is, but you are anointed for ministry. Yes. <laughs> you will do studies. Let me say it anyway. You will do studies. And for a long time, this will be your usual activity. It is not what you study you will speak about. So you will come and you have studied and you have prepared accurate teachings. But when you get there, all of a sudden something will happen to you and you cannot teach. It will. Mountain that can be touched with hands. We have come to Mount Zion. To the city of the great king, to the church of the festival. The city of just men made perfect. To an innumerable company of angels. 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 To an innumerable company of angels.
sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's see what can happen in 15 minutes. Just, just. Now, you see, where we wanted to read, you can go back and read it, really. It's First Corinthians chapter 6. And I was going to start from verse 9 to begin to explain certain things. We will find out that in that scripture, Paul was taking his time because Paul was driving at something. There was somewhere Paul was going to. Now, Paul began to do something that is not common or that we don't really talk about so much in our time. Please follow me. Paul is, was doing something that is not that we really don't talk so much about in our time. If we begin to talk about these things in the church, there is a perspective that we carry. There's a mindset that we have. When people begin to talk about things like fornication, adultery, and all of these things, all these things, you know, we don't preach these things in church. Now, painfully, um, that's that's really not the point. Now, it's not. He's not saying them because he wants to judge anybody. He's saying them because we need to understand. Okay, while that is not the message, we. We need to understand that these things are things that the Lord does not like. Please follow me. Follow me. We're going somewhere. So Paul now began to explain certain things because there was somewhere he was driving at. And so he began to call the names of these situations and issues like fornication and adultery and idolatry. And, and um, let's look at those things. Let's go back to them. Neither be deceived, for neither fornicators. You know who a fornicator is? I know you know these things. Fornicator is somebody who has sex and is not married. That's fornication. Paul was pointing out these things. An idolater is the one who has someone else or something else in his heart that is higher than God, that is sitting upon the center of his heart. When, when God is not your ultimate, for a lot of people... God has been relegated to the back. Experience is now our ultimate. The things we have gone through in life has been able to forge our ideology about life. So when a man talks about God and the things God can do, it's hard for us to believe because we have tried several times and experience has showed us that one plus one is always two. So if God is saying it is five, there's no how God can be above my experience. We only believe God to the degree with which our experiences will permit. And so anytime God begins to come above the things that we, what we know to be true, based on our experiences or examples, it is hard for us to believe. That man is an idolater. Yes. You now have another God. You have one now that has forged your ideology. That is higher than God. Is there? He said, "No adulteress. Anyone who co- indulges in sexual activities outside of his marriage, even when he's married." It, Paul was pointing out these things. Now, somebody will say he's doing this thing because it's the Corinthian church, and the Corinthian church was not a strong church. They were baby believers. I don't think so. I don't know where we really get those ideologies from. I understand that yes, the church was not matured and everything. But then I ask a question. If a church is not matured, is, not, is that not the more reason why you will concentrate on a lot of things to tell them so you can build them up? Do you just leave them and give them irrelevant things to just chew? You give them what they need to grow. So just in case that's the situation, but he's sharp pointing them out. Now, he then goes for that to say, no, the effeminate. This is just really talking about um, prostitution, whether male prostitution, female prostitution, things about that nor abusers of themselves with mankind. This is homosexuality and other sexual perversions. Now, nor thieves, a man who carries the thing that does not belong to him, is here. Yes. They send you. You will not bring the change. And you keep it. (laughs) That person is here. Yes. There's no wisdom to it. If it is not your own, it's not your own. A man who takes what does not belong, belong to him, whether forcefully or skillfully, is where? What did he call it? 
No covetous. You know, covetousness is, is a thing of the heart. A lot of the times, yes, robbers are covetous. But even much more, there are some people who are not robbers. You don't carry. But you just feel like you want more. And there is no sense of contentment. We, we're not saying that there shouldn't be a desire to increase. But there should be contentment on that journey. When a man is not contented with what he has, he becomes covetous. Okay. No drunkard, anybody who is given to alcohol. Why I'm moving, no revilers. You know who a reviler is? People who are abusive. When you have an abusive tongue, some of, some, some of you, 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 don't, you don't waste time. You don't waste time. You, you can quickly just, the way the words come out, stupid, idiot, foolish, they're all part of it. And even stronger ones, you know, there are way more stronger ones. But revilers are people, when, when, when you are abusive with your, with your tongue, no extortioners. You know who an extortioner is? People who, who are greedy. If you sell something, hmm? you sell something, and you want to make exorbitant money from what you sell, you see, all profit is profit. Eh -eh. That man is an extortioner. You want to make more profit than even the thing that you are selling in itself. And you call that wisdom. You buy a thing, 100 naira, you want to sell it, and you are selling it 500. And you say, it's wisdom. It's wis wisdom is profitable to direct. I didn't steal. I just put the money for him to know. That guy is an extortioner. It, this is greed. It's part of it. You see, I'm just trying to... Do one, because if we look at it, you may read these things and the tendency for you to feel like, ah, they are just, they are, it's them, not them, them. It's not them, them. Them are here. Paul began to speak about this, and then Paul went for that to say that these people shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, now somebody will want to say, but I'm born again, I'm giving my life to Christ. I understand that. There's no problem with that. But we must understand where Paul is going to with this thing he's saying. Then he now went for that to say, and such were some of you. That's who you used to be. He was giving them the pictures that they were before now. now you notice that Paul skillfully brought these situations. And Paul was not telling them that this is who you are. Paul was telling them that this is who you were. Are you understanding me? Now, he wasn't, it wasn't as though some of this, because when you read the, the, the Corinthian church, some of these things were happening in the people. Are you following me? Yes. But Paul was not telling them as though, okay, this is your present situation. Paul was telling them that this is who you used to be. Because you need to know who you used to be and know who you are now. You shouldn't be living out who you were. What you should be living out is who God has made you to be. And what has God done to you? He has washed you. He has sanctified you. And he has justified you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now, this thing is not just a statement. This thing looks more like marriage. I need you to understand it. It looks more like marriage. Now, sorry, sir. How many months now? You'll be married for how many months? Sorry? Let's say two months. Thank you. Now, just is not since you've been married hmm, for that two months. Whether by mistake or by anything. Has your wife done something you didn't like? She has done it in this one month. Uh, yeah. So those who are having ten, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. Now, you see something. Let me explain something to you. Now, this is the point. That you didn't like it doesn't mean she's not your wife. You understand? You have been married. You understand? But you didn't like that thing. If she keeps doing that thing, you may not break the marriage, but it will affect something. The thing it will affect is called fellowship. It will affect the re if she keeps doing it, the thing you don't like and say, eh, talk, even though uh, because something has happened. What happened is this when you married her, let me tell you what you did. Whether you told her or not, it's just what is happening here. When the Bible says you are washed. Jesus, of course, he knows us. He took us. And it didn't matter what you have done. That I love you. Your past is in your past. We, we cannot do washing. But for Jesus, he has washed. Do you understand? So whatever you, are, you wear or what, the things that you used to do, it doesn't, I don't care. Now, 
I have said that I love you. Now I have washed you, I have sanctified. To sanctify means that I have consecrated you to myself. You are for me now. Are we correct? So before you began anything with her, okay, it was okay for her to have different friends. It's okay for her to have five pictures, okay? And be saying, which one will I go for? He now fell on you. He said, I want the one with full hair, full hair. Let's see this. Now, get it. Now, get, get what we are trying to say. Now, you see, that would have been permitted then. Okay? But the point at the moment where she chose you, where you say, okay, we have begun something. Now she's sanctified. It is you and her and nobody else. It becomes a crime when someone else comes into the situation. And having done that, the Bible now said, this is what I did. I justified you in what? Now, whose name does she bear? It's your name. So it didn't matter who she was before now. Now, she is Marianne. Is it Habat? Habat. So, the new name has now given her a different identity. So, whatever she was when she was Marianne Winter, that one is gone. Now, she's Marianne Habat is a new journey. And so, the Bible is saying that he has justified us by the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Because he wants you to understand that leave that past. Meanwhile, that thing she did, okay, that you did not like. And it's not like you have not done the one she did not like. If I ask her now, maybe you have even done more. But that thing that she did that you did not like, that's not her first time of doing it. She has done it before you got married, whether to you or to somebody else. You know what I'm trying to say? No. But you see, probably if she had been doing that continuously, before you saw her or before you married her, you probably would have thought twice. But you have married her. And when you marry her, the point is this. When you continue interacting, fellowship is activated. We keep building on it. Something will begin to happen just in case. I'm not saying maybe it was a mistake. But just in case it was a habit. By virtue of fellowship with you, constant communication and communion, something will begin to happen to that thing that she knows you don't like. She will begin to dislike it. She will begin to come to a point where even if I would have wanted to do this thing because he doesn't like it. Do you know how she got there? It's called fellowship. So the Bible now said, let's go to verse 12. Verse 12. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not what? Are not expedient. That word expedient means profitable. All things are not profitable. So even though you are married her and then you said to her, see, this is your house. We are married. You can do anything you want to do. You understand what I mean? <laughs> this is your house. It is our house. You can do anything you want to do. Now, she knows that yes, while I have the liberty to do all things, all things seem to be lawful. But... I understand that there are some things I will do that will not profit this relationship. And so because of that understanding, she will not do those things. Because what she wants is what? Is profit. She wants this relationship to be profitable. So she begins to, okay, this is not. So even though all things are lawful, not all things are what? I expect it. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Continue. I don't want to spend that. Meat for belly and belly for meat, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for who? And the Lord for... Are you seeing the marriage scenario now? The body for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So what we have... It's fellowship. And as we keep living our lives and we are building on this thing, the idea is not just that I'm born again. It's that I want this to profit. 
and I'm looking at a relationship and I'm asking, how do we get better? So the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body because we have been consecrated. It is me and him. If there is one thing I know with respect to the Spirit of God that helps communication is prayer. A spiritual man will never be successful on his spiritual journey if he takes lightly prayer. And so Jesus will begin to tell us in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, no, Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. He will say things like, watch and pray. I wish I had time, I would have showed you other scriptures, but for time, let's leave it. So watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. It is not that the temptations will not come, but when a man is a man of prayer, even when they come, he will have weakened his body. He would have weakened his body such that the body will not enter because he understood something. He said, for I know that yes, I can testify that the spirit is willing. Everything I want to do is in your spirit and your spirit is willing. He said, but your flesh will not let it. <laughs> so the solution is prayer. So what prayer does is that prayer supplies the energy that is embedded in your spirit and it supplies it to your body such that your body now comes into alignment it's your spirit. So both of them will work hand in hand. All of a sudden, you will find out that your body begins to like the things that your spirit likes. It was this that Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 8 when he said, we read the other day, if you can remember, if that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. He said, the very spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall also Quicken your mortal bodies. And one of the ways is by prayer. Prayer makes available. You know, we read Ephesians earlier, chapter 3, where Paul was praying for the people. And it was Paul that began to pray that prayer. He said, For this cause I bow my knees to pray to the Lord, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that He will grant you according to the riches of His glory, that you will be strengthened with might by His Spirit in your inner man. In Colossians chapter 4, he began to tell us about a man called Epaphras. He said, for I bear record with that man, how that Epaphras had labored in the place of prayer. He said, and his labor was for one thing. He said that you will stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. A man can come there. I understand when Paul say I pray without ceasing. I understand when the James tells us about a man called Elijah who was a man of like passion, the Bible said. The only difference was he prayed. Hey, there's something in your spirit. There's something in your spirit. What you have been looking for is in your spirit. What you have been looking around for is in your spirit. As we are speaking now, it's in your spirit. Prayer can draw it out. So sometimes you just stay. It doesn't have to be a prayer schedule. What do you do with your spare time? <laughs> if you have one, what do you do with it? When you are alone and you even choose to watch a movie, I don't, don't, I'm not saying don't watch, you can watch. But as you are watching the movie, what are you doing? I don't know about you, but keep yourself busy. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Use tongues to break your speech. 
When you are talking to somebody and you speak, I'm, I'm so sure quite a number of people would have noticed that with me. Sometimes you just see me in the house, I'll be moving around and my mouth is moving. I just moving. You say, what are you doing? I'm fellowshipping. If you know somebody well enough, you don't need to ask him certain questions. You will know certain things that they like. There's a way you will fellowship with somebody, you just know that this person's best color is purple. Not because you asked, because you fellowshiped. So you can be so in tune with the Holy Spirit. You just know what God wants. If you can, if you can, but if you cannot for the sake of whatever you're afraid of, it's fine. But if you can, hold the person by your left and your right. Just pray in the Spirit. You can sit down, don't worry, just, just pray this way. Randasko Lavada. Elaku Shabala, Evrando Skevena Talibados. Erodobonos Kafatala Brantos Kida Bronto Loco Brate Salada Badoko Brahas to Nabala. Erodobonos Kefeta Cruz Talabrande Sukabalate. Poros Cavina, E Rabon si Alevana, E Ruvena Sofan de la Cusa Veda Combela, E Rudabala Combela Bula Varadia Combela Tosa, E Ronomon se Frendos que Galanto Ibaraste, E Ronomon Catila Bate Lombela Combela Sa, Ai Alaba no Cobale Catena Bahasune Malahate. Ela tá pra 
If I'm left alone, if I'm left alone, I will just say we have closed. The only reason why I have to put a pause on this, but it has not stopped. Some of you, forget it. You don't need to ask God for grace to pray tonight. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need to ask. You will need help not to pray tonight. Some of you, you will need help not to pray this night. In the name of Jesus. The only reason I have to stop this is because of how precious this is. If you know you are here and you are not born again, in the heart of God, we don't joke with it. He doesn't much more than anything he wants to build a relationship with you all eyes are closed you can leave the person you're holding you know you're not born again you know that if he comes right now you're not going you don't have a relationship with him and you want to say i want to build i want you to come into my heart i want to receive your life this spirit life that we have been talking about if you're like that and you are here i want to pray with you if you're like that, can you raise your hand? I want to pray with you. You want to say, I want to give my life to Jesus. You're the reason why we have to stop. Jesus will do it for one person, for one soul. He will do it. You are here and you want to say that I, I, don't, I don't know him. I want to be born again. If you're raising your hand, raise it above your head so I can see. God bless you. can see one hand. Just keep raising it if you are. I don't know if I can see two hands. God bless you. I want to pray. Where you are, I want you to talk to the Lord and just ask him. Tell him, Lord, I've come to you tonight. I repent. Bring repentance to the Lord. Say, I'm sorry for my sins. Talk to him yourself. Yes. Tell him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I'm sorry for my wrongs. I acknowledge that you came and you died for me. You shed your blood for me. Today I have come. Take me as your own. 
be my Lord and my Savior from now henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you. Now I'm praying right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, the sleep will be handed over to you, of course. You just feel it and you meet with them very quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these precious souls. Lord, I ask, oh God, that you who in no wise will cast us away, that you receive them tonight. Lord, you who have kept us from falling, keep them from falling. And I ask, oh God, that in the name of Jesus, these lives will not fail you. You will use them for your glory. Let this experience, oh God, be fresh in their hearts all the days of their lives. Help them to grow in grace and in the knowledge of your will. In Jesus' name.